Good morning. I hope you're doing well this week. I'm glad you've taken the time to pause and listen to a short devotion that I hope will encourage you. The title of my devotion this week is called Encouraged. I'm using the book of Acts, uh, specifically chapter 16. I'm going to cite scripture uh, verse 40 and verse 25 in this lesson today. But before we start, I want to ask you a question. Are you encouraged about life or are you discouraged about the future? The answer to that question will tell if you are an encourager or a discourager. Do you see the cup half full or do you see it half empty? Do you fret over things or do you look forward to things? Are you excited about the future or do you worry about it? That tells a lot about your faith. Are you putting it in God or are you putting it in yourself? If you put it in yourself, you're always going to see the cup half full because you know you don't have the ability to keep that cup full all the time, but God does. Look with me at the scripture today. Apostle Paul, in his writing, it says, After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. We see this because Paul is, in, is an encourager. Scottish pastor John McNeil told a story about his childhood. And he told about walking home one night late at night. He said it was nearly midnight when he started to walk seven miles through a lonely glen to get home. The road had a bad name. It was very dark and covered. And this particular night, apparently there was no moonlight because it was extremely dark. And two miles outside his little village, the road gets darker and darker. He said he was just entering the dark defile when about a hundred yards ahead in the densest of darkness suddenly rang out a very strong and cheery voice. It said, is that you, Johnny? He said it was his father, the bravest, strongest man he had ever known. I don't know about you, but when we're walking in our darkest hours of life, we need someone to call our name and to encourage us through it. Those times of darkness, they can make us or break us. And most often, the loving words of encouragement at the right time can reshape our lives into what God intends us to be. Maybe you're going through a dark time in your life right now. Maybe you need some encouragement. You know, our God is the God of encouragement. Throughout the scriptures, we read and we're encouraged. People just like you and me fall, fail, and do wrong, but yet God blesses them. God uses various means to accomplish his goals. He uses his word, first of all, and he uses his Holy Spirit to guide and direct us, to help us discern what is right and what's wrong. He uses the writings of others. Maybe it's devotions. Maybe you're getting a devotion by email. Those are all good things. But he also uses people. Don't overlook that. You know, in Acts 16, we read that Paul and Silas had gone to the area of Macedonia. And they'd gone to the main city in this uh, territory, and it was called Philippi. Paul comes across a young slave girl, and she's possessed by the devil. She has a demon in her. And she aggravates Paul, so Paul casts the demon out of the slave girl. Well, the owner of the slave girl made a lot of money using her, and he got mad and he had Paul put in prison. So in verse 25, and I want you to see it, it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymns to God and the other prisoners and were listening to them. So we see that Paul is encouraged. He's even praying and singing while he's in prison. Paul gathered these young converts during a very dark time when he went back after he got out of prison and he went back to Lydia's house and he encouraged them. We all need encouragement. You know, somebody that's listening to this devotion today is 
on a gloomy, dark road? Can you call their name in the dark? Can you be an encouragement to them? There's somebody that you know today that needs to be lifted up. Maybe that somebody is you. And if you reach out to help someone else, I bet God will bless you and you'll get encouraged. I want to quote from Pastor John McNeil when he said this. He said, many a time since when things have been getting black and gloomy about me, I've heard a voice greater than that of my earthly parent cry, fear not for I am with thee. You and I can hear that same voice if we put Christ first in our lives, accept him as our Lord and Savior, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and follow God's will for our lives. I want to take this time to invite you to join us and worship with us in church. We meet on Sunday mornings at 1030. You'll find our church to be very loving and welcoming, a place that you can grow and develop your talents for God. We also have committed to virtual services online so that people can stay connected because we realize that people have busy lives. They have to work different hours these days and they're not able to physically be in church every Sunday. So we have a live stream on YouTube and Facebook. Go to our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and you'll get notifications whenever we do devotions or when, when our services go live and you can be a part of it. We always want to encourage you to be a part of God's plan, and that plan is to be a member of the church. As I depart today from this devotion, I want you to pray with me. Almighty God, we thank you for your words of encouragement. We know, Father, that you use those around us to be encouragers. We know that was part of your plan and to have the church, that we not forsake the assembling of the saints, that we come together, that as a family we lift one another up. We help one another. And Father, I just pray that someone that's listening to this devotion today would be lifted up. That all of us that hear this word would be reminded that we as Christians need to be the greatest encouragers on earth. Help us, Father, to reach out and encourage someone today in the name of Jesus Christ. For we offer this prayer in his name. Amen.